All right, I have collected a data file with the hydrocarbon series in it. So next I'm going to have to create a quantitation batch. So I can quickly do that by creating a new batch. I will just call it uh, RI. And I will add in that sample that I've just acquired, which is my constant flow hydrocarbon series sample. And now I have that sample and I need to go over to the method editor with that sample and I can see the hydrocarbon series here and I need to put in the compounds uh, in the method editor so that I have a method with the compound names and there are several ways to do that you could even do it manually by just adding the new compounds in here once I have that I've got my batch and I can move to the next step alright here I am with a small method I've got my hydrocarbon series here and as you can see it finds them and I made a small method I put in a very tiny one-point calibration curve to make sure it's a valid method and with that valid method I can then apply that method to the batch and I've got a single sample batch and I can see here I'm finding all of those compounds and now I will save that batch and I've got what I need to move on to make the retention time calibration mapping. All right, let's take a look at the library editor and discuss the ability to create custom libraries. In this case, we'll use Quant and take Spectra from Quant and create a product ion scan library. Here I am in the library editor. I've already entered a couple of compounds, cannabidiol and THC. I would like to enter another compound at this moment, so I will right click and say new compound. That creates a new compound which is blank here, and I will now give it a name. I'll call it uh, cannabidiol2, and of course I could enter in uh, CAS number, formula, molecular weight, and even the mole file is shown in another section. But what I want to do next is to enter in the spectral information. So I will go up here to the new spectrum and say add a new spectrum. It's blank of course. So I need to go over to either qual or in this case I'll go over to quant. And here are the compounds that were already existing. Cannabidiol, there's the spectrum. THC, there's the spectrum. And now I have cannabidiol 2 which eludes later and I'm going to in the spectrum window I'm going to copy that spectrum which puts it in the clipboard and now I will go back to the library editor and I will paste that spectrum in here now notice this is a product ion spectrum there's the precursor ion I can check that by going over to the properties and you'll see here that the selected M over Z which is the precursor ion is denoted as 367.4 which is the same as what's coming from the spectral quant uh, description. So that gives you an idea of how you can create your own custom libraries from your data acquisition taking the spectra and creating a spectral custom library. Thank you for your attention. All right, let's start up the retention time calibration tool. I need to go to the start menu or look for the icon, but let's go from the start menu and I'm under here quant tools and I will see RT calibration and I will start that up. So the parts that I need to define are first the batch. So I need to find that batch that I was just working with and that is under RT cal and the batch I created was hydrocarbon.batch. Now the library that I'm using is the library that I've stored in Mass Hunter uh, database and I've called it RI. That is the library with all the compounds that I'm looking for in it. And last I need to pick an output location and I will just call this, I'll, I'll label this uh, number nine. 
So I will generate that file and we'll take a look at it, see what's in there. Let's just take a look at this uh, mapping file. It's very simple. It's a CSV file and if I look at it in Excel, I can see that uh, I've got the name of the compound, I've got the retention index, and as you can see the retention time increases with increasing retention index. You could plot this out in Excel and see the graph, but I think you can actually just see it from the numbers here. There's a number of ways to use this scenario. Unknowns analysis, which I think you can envision as very powerful with retention indices in the flavors and fragrances uh, business, for example. Uh, we have perceived compounds where when you're doing library searching, you can use the retention in this index to help you constrain that library search and get a better, higher quality fit. And last, I'll show you the idea of automatically creating a quantitation method and we'll use library search but library search with retention indices. Now it's time to really apply this technology. I've got a new injection that has I believe some pesticides in it and I'm going to demonstrate this technology by using new method from acquired scan data with library search. So it will use the library search, look through and find compounds and create me a quantitation method, very similar to the thinking behind unknowns analysis. So here I go. I'm going to point it to the library that I've got. I'm going to pick that file that has the pesticides in it. And I'm going to go to the advanced here and as I look through in the library search tab, I need to make sure that it's pointing to the retention time calibration file that I've created. So in, in that case, it's uh, my last try, which is nine, and I'm going to let it uh, fire off. So it's going to take that data file, it's going to go through and deconvolute the scan data, pulling out those spectra one at a time, and then when it's got those spectra together, it's going to go over to the library using not only the spectral match uh, criteria and constraints, but also with the retention time and the retention time to retention index mapping, using that criteria in the retention index window to come up with a list of compounds. So there it's finished with um, deconvolution. Now it's going to run through the library search and pick out those matches. And it's going to show us a list of compounds that it's found. So let me sort those on library match score. And if I look here at uh, this set of compounds, I can see it's found some pesticides to create this method here. And uh, if I look at the other columns that are associated with it here, I can easily see that there's the retention index, there's the library retention index, that's associated with each one of these compounds. It's found the CAS number and it has a nice library match score. So that demonstrates the use of retention indices and I think with uh, just a bit of uh, extension you can envision going through with unknowns analysis in the flavors and fragrances industry and using this technology to look for things that you have in your own custom library using retention indices as a constraint as well as a spectral matching. Thank you very much.